What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today, as voted on by you guys on my Twitter, at PapaXC4, give me a follow if you aren't already doing so, I said, what rebuild do you want to do this weekend, and overwhelmingly, the Pittsburgh Steelers were the top team, we've yet to do a Steelers rebuild, and I'm excited, any team that has glaring holes at quarterback, that's always a fun rebuild, and there's a couple top quarterback prospects, be it in 2022 and 2023, that we've yet to use, so, I mean, obviously, you already clicked the video, it was in the thumbnail, but there is a couple quarterbacks I would love to try to get here in Pittsburgh, but we got to wait because we were sitting there at pick 20. You never know how the board's going to follow. Maybe we'll be aggressive. I don't know yet. But as you can see down here, we signed Mitchell Trubisky. I have tried my best to go exactly in line with the Pittsburgh Steelers offseason to date. And that includes signing Mitchell Trubisky. But I mean, yeah, it starts here at pick 20. Might need to move up to try to grab a quarterback, but... I mean, and that's my plan, but you never know. Crazy things happen. You know, we have teams like the Chargers that will draft a quarterback in the first round and completely screw up any big board that you may potentially have. So we're just going to have to wait and see, but that is my plan. Looking at the rest of the roster, well, uh, the special teams unit is pretty decent. You got Presley Harvin there at punter. Uh, nice young punter. He should be fine. You got Boswell, one of the better kickers in the NFL. The safeties, you got veteran Carl Joseph. You got Minka Fitzpatrick, 89, superstar, absolute baller. He's definitely going to be one of the pillars of this rebuild on the defensive side of the ball. The corner room is, you know, I would say slightly above average with the limited ceiling. They brought back Witherspoon. They signed Levi Wallace from the Bills. Sutton is, you know, solid lane. You got James Pierre. Ultimately, it's a room that I think we're probably going to try to land in draft a corner sooner than later. You just need that lockdown guy. I, I got some serviceable players. But in terms of upside, kind of limited right now for the Steelers. The linebacking core is very good. Knock it out the touches, hopefully for this whole rebuild. You have Highsmith at right outside linebacker. He's 74 with a star dev. You have the best player not named Aaron Donald on the defensive side of the ball in the NFL. And the reigning defending defensive player of the year in TJ Watt. Who, I mean, let's be honest, he should be a 99. But that's not going to be a complaint. That's not going to be a hill I'm going to die on. Because he will almost certainly be a 99 by probably the halfway point of the first year of the rebuild. So that's neither here nor there. And then the inside, you've got Devin Bush, who in real life seems a little dicey. But as far as Madden goes, 77 with a star dev, only 24 years old. That is good enough. We got Miles Jack coming over. He got released by the Jags. Has a super star dev in this save. I don't know if that's what he had. Uh, if you did like a start today, I, I feel like he would have been a star. But for the sake of this rebuild, when I put Miles Jack on this team, he was a superstar. We're going to take it. Like, you know, obviously, when you, when you, you use the... Uh, Use real life rosters option, which I always do for these rebuilds. Now I start the Super Bowl. Uh, those players, so like Miles Jack, could have earned the superstar dev through Madden kind of deal, like this season he had in real life, but Madden gave him the dev trade increase. That's what I think happened, but I'm not going to overthink it. He's superstar. I'm keeping him that way. Look at the rest of the team. The D line is old, but solid. I mean, Alou Alou's a solid nose tackle. You have Cam Hayward, who's an absolute beast, but he's 33. You have Stephon Toot, who's very good, but he's 29. So ultimately, very old, very much, you know, at all spots on that front three, we could look at getting a younger guy that could be a successor. So we need to keep an eye. I like the fact, though, that there are a lot of holes on this team. So there's going to be a lot of situations where if we can just find, when we look at the scouting, especially once we get out of my custom draft class into 2023 and beyond, you know, best BPA is going to be most likely a fit somewhere on this Pittsburgh Steeler team, which is going to be pretty good. O-line is also not ideal at the tackle spots, but I think the inside's solid. You have a core four here, right tackle. Obviously, kind of just a guy placeholder until we can find a proper right tackle. Right guard, they signed James Daniels away from the... Uh, where did he come from? Chicago? The Bears? He's 79 star. with a, He's only 24, so that's a really, really good piece for this offensive line. You have Kendrick DeGreen at center. He's 72 normal. Uh, I've actually heard a lot of Steeler fans thinking he's not the best of centers, but from a Madden standpoint, I mean, center... As far as a sim is concerned, I would almost argue center is like right there at fullback in terms of doesn't really matter. So, I mean, Green has upside. I can see him hitting high 70s, low 80s by the end of five years if it goes that far. And then at a left guard, we have Kevin Dotson, 73 with a star depth. So, I do think the interior of this offensive line is solid. The tackle spots, though, are kind of rough. Between Dan Moore and a core four, those guys can be band-aids for the time being, but we want to find higher upside guys sooner than later. It's best because in Madden, no, you know, no dev traits for offensive linemen. There's no take a guy that's 22, 23, 21, that's high 60s like a Dan Moore. If this was almost any other position. If Dan Moore was a defensive player, if he was a wide receiver, and I had a 23, 68 that was going to play a lot, I'd be like, man, 
Hopefully we get him a dev trait and we don't have to worry about it, but doesn't exist for offensive linemen. Hopefully they correct that in Madden 23. Tight end, we're absolutely Gucci. Pat Fryer must set and forget. He is going to be one of the pillars of this rebuild. He's an absolute monster. Terrific selection. At wide receiver, I think we, we just need one more. Deontay Johnson, his, he, you know, he's going to take a lot of salary cap to re-sign this upcoming season, but I have no problem doing that. He's 26-85 with a superstar dev. You got Claypool, who's an absolute monster on the outside. And uh, regardless of the ups and downs he has in real life, as a Canadian, we're going to focus on how good he is in Madden. 78 star dev and only 24 that is pretty damn good. So, you, you know, you room for one more wide receiver for sure. But I, I don't think this is going to be a position we're going to spend too, too much money on. I think I'm going to invest in Johnson and Claypool here. And hopefully maybe we draft a third wide receiver at some point in this rebuild. You have Watt at fullback, running back again, set and forget Najee Harris. 83 superstar going into his second year of Alabama. We've improved a little bit the interior of that offensive line. He is going to be very important. And then we look at the quarterback spot. Mitchburg, they signed him. I was it like two years, 14 mil. I didn't have to quite pay that to bring Mitchell Trubisky here, but I did get in a bidding war with the Denver Broncos, I think it was for some reason. Um, you know, I would say that if I could take, you know, look at the top quarterbacks in the class. We'll look at Malik Willis. We'll look at Kenny Pickett. And now there's like, there's momentum behind, you know, Sam Howell and Desmond Ritter. But I'll probably take all those guys over Trubisky, but I, that's also saying. You know, Trubisky's also in that line of backup quarterbacks that may still deserve one chance to be a starter at a different team, different environment. So maybe there's something there. It's not going to derail the fact that I'm going to try to aggressively land a quarterback in this upcoming draft. Because let's be honest, just, we know from a Madden standpoint, very limited ceiling there. And the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook's not like, you know, New Orleans. It's not like Tampa. It's not like Kansas City where literally any quarterback, any rating will get 40 touchdowns. I don't think that's going to happen here. So, you know, if we can't get a quarterback, sure, maybe we'll have Mitchell Trubisky for a year, but that is not my intentions. Also, I mean, just absolutely terrible news on the weekend that uh, Dwayne Haskins passed away. Um, I had some people actually say C4, you know, when, when I did the poll, you got to do Dwayne Haskins, got to win Dwayne Haskins Super Bowl, make him the, the, the next starter of the Steelers. And, you know, that's just, that's not the kind of content that I, I want to create. That's cheap content. I don't think it's in good taste. There probably could be some people that may do that. I'm not one of them. But what I did do is I signed him to a five-year deal. He was they, The Pittsburgh Steelers offseason actually brought him back on a one-year. I thought, why not have him here for the full rebuild? Uh, obviously, he's not going to play. But I feel like, you know, I feel like that's, you know, something that we could kind of do is that if things go well, Pittsburgh we just ends up being a fun rebuild and we can win a Super Bowl, He's going to be a part of this roster when we do it. He's, we're just not going to, you know, necessarily exploit it, put Dwayne Haskins in the title, put him in the thumbnail. That's that's not the way that I want to make my videos. But I, I feel like, you know, let's have him here for the rebuild. Let's let's have him be a part of this quarterback room, and hopefully we can win a Super Bowl and uh, try our best to just, you know, remember Dwayne Haskins. I mean, I shared a video on my Twitter of he was like a young Dwayne Haskins, like uh, he was visiting Ohio State. He's like, I'm going to be Ohio State quarterback. And he ended up, obviously, going there, being a Heisman contender. And, uh, man, it's just absolutely brutal news hearing that he passed away uh, 24 years old. You know, it's not too far off from where I'm at. And that's, I don't know, man. Makes you just makes you reflect a little bit and uh, absolutely sucks. So, uh, shout out. Rest in peace, Dwayne Haskins. And hopefully you could just be a member of a Super Bowl winning team. Have some fun here. And that's what we're going to try to do with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So now, I really don't think we're going to be overly active for the remainder of free agency. I don't want to go too far off the course of what the Pittsburgh Steelers have done in real life. I'm just excited right now to get into the draft and hopefully find ourselves a quarterback. Okay, now it is time to get into the draft. And uh, we do know what quarterback we want. That does not mean that that's going to be the quarterback that we could end up getting. Let's kind of see how things go down. Uh, really, we got to need to take a probably look at the board after the Giants pick. I think we should be decent on the quarterback front. Until then. So we got Thibodeau there going to Detroit. Pick three. Texans get a Quanu pick for the Jets. Go Sauce Gardner. Pick five. The Giants go Evan Neal. Pick six. This could be quarterback. They go Kyle Hamilton. Pick seven. The Giants go after Jordan Davis, pick eight. The Falcons select 
Oh no, come on. Come on. I think we just blew it. Did we just shit? I mean, we got Malik Willis. Gonna have to wait for the Kenny Pickett. I, 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 I still feel like that's probably the right call. As much as I wanted to get Kenny Pickett, you know, we would have probably had to package our first and a second round to get Kenny Pickett. Or just stay at 20 and end up having a shot at Malik Willis. Now, I know we've been there, done that with him at quarterback. We used Malik Willis. Um, we did the Lions with Malik Willis. That was once upon a time. We did the football team with Malik Willis. And here we are. Another opportunity to go with Malik Willis, quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, into the second round, I think the value for our team right now, there's, it really comes down to two players. First, we have DeMarvin Leal, who's here, second, third rounder as a DN. He is a DN fit for our scheme. We also have Travis Jones from UConn. He would be the nose tackle for a Lou Lou, terrific athlete. Hmm... I feel like Leal's the better pick here, even though Travis Jones might be the higher overall player. <sighs> Screw it. We'll grab Travis Jones. Nose tackle out of UConn. No dev trait. Should still have, you know, high 60s type rating. Third round. Final. This will be kind of our final pick that I'm going to showcase here. I, I feel like this actually is like a Steeler type pick. And we're going to look at Calvin Austin the third, the burner out of Memphis. Elite athlete. Seems like the, the Ray Ray McLeod replacement. And has an opportunity to be our wide receiver three here in his rookie season. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the draft recap here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. See some of the ratings. Really interesting what Travis Jones is going to be. 68. I mean, this kind of looks like a realistic draft class. I mean, that's what people like my rosters. Uh, it's not going to be overpowered. But like, that's probably the values of what, if like, this was their actual draft class, what they would be pulling. And we got Malik Willis here. Hidden Dev, 71. Again, you know, ideally, I would like to have, like, a different quarterback. But this is probably the one instance that I would be fine with Malik Willis because I, if I had to say, if I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Pittsburgh Steelers actually get after a quarterback, I do think Malik Willis is the one they want. Uh, Kenny Pickett went at 18 to the Saints. So he would have had to probably trade with the Philadelphia Eagles. And, um, you know, is what it is. We're going to have to wait for a Kenny Pickett rebuild yet again. I mean, still plenty of other opportunities to do a Kenny Pickett rebuild, uh, you look at the Atlanta Falcons. Would be a pretty, a pretty fun rebuild there to utilize him. You could also maybe the Texans potentially. But as it stands right now, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I would say like enough. I'm at home watching this as an unbiased Pittsburgh Steelers fan in a bubble, in a vacuum. We're not looking at the other rebuilds we've done so far this year. Malik Willis is probably the quarterback that I want. So that is what we're doing. We got Malik Willis. You and I would have personally preferred maybe doing something a little different. Travis Jones, 68 normal. We got the speedster Calvin Austin out of Memphis, 93 speed, 94 acceleration, 93 agility. He's an electrifying playmaker. We got Luke Fortner, depth center. We could probably kick him to guard if need be. And then actually we got a solid pick here in Tyler Vrabel. Swing tackle out of Austin College, 63 overall. So a year out for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here is how our lineup kind of sets itself up. We're going to go Malik Willis. At a quarterback over Trubisky, seems, you know, commit to him right away. That's the rebuild. In terms of changes, though, not much from the preview. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, did not go on the offensive line. Decided to go D-tackle. Jones, I was, you know, would have been nice for him to have a dev trade, but right now we just have depth and maybe successor, especially if Alou will lose in a contract year. Maybe we don't have to resign him. We can go with Jones for the future. But, you know, you got Miles Jack there. He's a new face on the back end. We got Joseph as a starting strong safety. Again, another position where just ideally would have been able to get a lot of different fits. But really wanted to limit ourselves into free agency for what the Steelers have actually done. And I didn't want to sign, you know, like Honey Badger or any of those guys that might have still been out there. But I'm still optimistic this year. Maybe some growing pains with Malik Willis. I don't know off the top of my head really how the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook sims. So I don't know if he's going to have a huge year. Or, you know, what to really expect from that standpoint. But I'm hoping we're competitive and maybe, you know, a wildcard team somewhere in that range. So the midway part of year one, four and four. It's not too bad with a rookie quarterback and a 77 overall offense. And we're still kind of right there in the race and ahead of the Bengals who went to the Super Bowl. So that's pretty dope. Uh, I think actually Malik Willis has been pretty 
pretty decent for us. Not seeing any of our guys up there, which is fine. But I, I think he got an offensive play of the week once, which is... I'll take that. But let's take a look at our contracts here. Mid-season of year one of this rebuild. First up, we have Minka Fitzpatrick. Absolutely pretty much five-year deal. Let's lock him in for the remainder of this rebuild. Beyond that, Stefan Tuin looking for a two-year deal. Should hold on to his rating fairly well over those two years. So I have no problem with that. Um, really, none of our depth guys. I don't think I'm overly anxious to have to re-sign them. We don't have to sign Alulu because we have uh, Travis Jones, Sutton... Feel like we can do better, you know what I'm saying? And Deontay Johnson really should be the last one. Boswell, maybe. But let's give Johnson five years, get him for the full length of this rebuild. Don't have to worry about it. Um, you know what? Boswell should be fine for two years. He's a really solid kicker. I know in real in Madden, he's probably not as good as he's in real life, but I mean, 95 kick power, 91 accuracy. But anytime you get bent over by a kicker, it's almost like, you know, have a little respect for yourself and walk away from the table. Okay, this is actually kind of cool. We have a QB breakout. This is the first time I've seen this. This is the new quarterback breakout. I might have to cheese it and try to get it. Well, let's take a look here. First of all, it's muted because I've heard people have copyright issues with the sound in this. Willie Willis is coming up a stellar game. He's in the process of taking the next step. Yada, yada, yada. Next performance. Throw one or fewer interceptions and have 350 yards or four total touchdowns to increase his dev to superstar. I, I think we got to go for it. All right, let's go. We'll just play the moments on. Oh, I should have let me watch Malik Willis run out here. All right, let's go, man. Four touchdowns, four or 350 total yards. No intercept. Oh, man, that intercept is going to be the hardest one. Oh, let's go. Slant cheese. I am just playing on all pro. I'm just chilling. I'm vibing in the background. If you know what that means, you know what that means. I'm not trying to. I want it to be difficult, but all pro difficult is about the level of difficulty I want. And there's touchdown. Number one. Oh, there we go. Third and a mile. We got a Dante Johnson. Just runs away from the linebacker. He probably shouldn't put Logan Wilson on Deontay Johnson. Taking advantage of that mismatch up. Touchdown. Number two. There we go. Reaches. I thought Jesse Bates might have made a play on that, but that's touchdown. Number three. One more to go. All right, we got a second and goal here. I'm actually gonna try to see if we can keep this Malik Willis. And right now we're gonna bail out to the right. Just looks like they swapped a safety. If we can get that blocked up, which we do. He outruns everybody and gets in. Touchdown, just no more picks. No picks. And we get the superstar. All right, just punch this one in. Get over the line. I don't think we have to win, but you obviously don't want to lose a game like this. Whoa, whoa, he wants to go for it? Okay. Fourth in goal. Could bleed this clock a little bit, but you know, we're just going to go for it. I'm going to probably just keep it with Malik Willis. Can't, I, uh, just can't go with the interception. I, I'd rather lose this game and get superstar from Malik Willis than not. And we win. Hold on. They ran out of time, and that should be good enough. Outstanding game. Very anti-C4 game, but I think we got to the dev trait. All right, let's see. Hopefully this scenario is not broken. There's no way. We literally did almost everything that was on the checklist. Another huge game, and deservedly so. And there is what you want to see. Malik Willis is now a superstar dev quarterback in his rookie season. Okay, just to be clear, this is the, the next week. They gave me another one of these scenarios. There's no way you can go from superstar to X-Factor. Wow, they give you two straight weeks. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to bite off more than two. But you know what? We'll sim it. And there's a chance. At home against the Saints. If he has a huge game. It was 400 yards. I don't think we hit it. Thoughts on the... Oh, that doesn't sound good. We hoped he had a better dev. Yeah, you know. I'll, I'm not going to get too greedy. We'll take the superstar. And actually, we did get another dev trade. It was a victory. 27-21. And it's for Alex Highsmith, the pass rusher. He's on star dev. So he's going to go up to superstar... Might as well keep it here live. See if we can get a superstar pass rusher on the other side of TJ Watt against the 1-11 Jets. This has got to be a win, which it is. And for Highsmith, he... He did! Two superstar dev traits in one season. Let's go. 
So honestly, a perfect year one, I think, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't even think we're going to have like some outrageous style line. Like, the last couple of rebuilds, we've been generous getting quarterbacks with like 40 bombs here. I don't know if we're going to hit that this year, but we made the playoffs. We won the division in a rebuild. Our quarterback got an in-season dev trade scenario, as well as Alex Highsmith going up to a superstar. So I mean, even if we're one and done, you, know, you don't want to speak that into an existence, but I think it's... It's been a hell of a year. So I'll look at the big picture. I'm not really seeing anybody from our team. Well, that's fine. We were one of the best teams in the NFL. Looking at Malik Willis, we have 4,100 passing yards, 28 touchdowns to eight picks to go along with 549 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns. So I like that, you know, obviously the game that we played, we had almost 100 yards rushing, but still Malik Willis finishing... 400 plus yards rushing and a bad is not too bad and look at Najee Harris 1300 yards 15 touchdowns that is a hell of a season sophomore season from him uh we got 11 and 10 for Johnson five yards short of a thousand yards for Claypool eight and seven for Fryermuth happy with those numbers 500 yards Calvin Austin the third in defensively 139 tackles 60 FLs three sacks four picks for Miles Jack so that seems like an absolute bargain then picking him off the free agency heap uh, after the Jags just let him walk. We got 11 and a half sacks, came Hayward. Only nine and a half from TJ Watt. That's a little disappointing, but I mean, seven and a half from Highsmith, seven from Tuit. I'm happy with those pressures for sure. Four picks from the free agent signing Levi Wallace, two from Witherspoon. I mean, I'm generally very happy with this team. And I'm, there wasn't going to be a whole lot to be negative about. You make the playoffs, we had all those dev traits. But you got to feel pretty good. Looking at the MVP race, Malik Willis coming in at number five. You got to be happy seeing that as well, man. Just really solid rebound. I mean, here I was a little down the dumps that I couldn't get Kenny Pickett. And Malik Willis is exactly what the doctor ordered here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Offensive Rookie of the Year, awesome. Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Aiden Hutchinson. Our best QB went to Mahomes. Malik Willis coming in at number four for the running back. Najee Harris at five. Jesus. Uh, I don't think we're going to have really any straight-out award winners. Is what it is. But we made the playoffs in year one. And uh, I'm going to be content regardless of this first result. Really, of year one. Couldn't have gone a whole lot better. Fortunately, our one done. Would have been nice to get a first playoff win for Malik Willis and company. But we fall to the Ravens 17-14. to Low-scoring game. Malik Willis, one touchdown, one pick. Of course, the Baltimore Ravens would draft Carson Strong, just just cause, um, you know, is what it is, man. We're only gonna get better. This was and will be the lowest point in terms of roster and talent. I think we have for Pitts. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna walk that back just a little bit because we do have some veterans that you know came Hayward. Who knows how much longer he got there? But I'm optimistic that going forward, as you can see, we're an 81 overall. We're only going to keep stacking on that, and we're going to be better and more competitive years 2, 3, 4, and 5. We got the all-time Madden 21 Super Bowl between the Browns and the Cowboys. We'll just sim this one to see who the winner is. Uh, but I want more so to see, do we get any dev trade scenarios? So the Cowboys beat the Browns, at least for the sake of this rebuild. is isn't like a team in our division. That was the third place team won the Super Bowl, pulling a New York Giants there. But I want to look at our roster, see if we have any more dev traits on top of Malik Willis, on top of Highsmith, and let's see what we got here. On the offensive side of the ball, it's all kind of... I mean, I wasn't really expecting... Maybe Fryermuth, but again, tight end on dev traits are kind of bugged right now. Defense is usually where you get your dev traits, and what we got is... Uh, nothing? Levi Wallace going up to star, maybe? I feel like that's... That's all right, you know? You also got to include... It's like a team that didn't sign any big free agents, but they, they re-signed... Like, look at the Philadelphia Eagles this year, right? Philly, like, didn't have a big free agency, but like, oh, well, we re-signed Milata and extended him and stuff like that. Well, you know, that's kind of like what we had here for the uh, the Steelers and our dev traits. Only got one, a star, but in season, we got Highsmith up to superstar and Malik Willis up to superstar. That's more than good enough. Let's get in the offseason. We're going into our first free agency period, our first true free agency period. We're not going to go absolutely insane... I wasn't about Chris Godwin, but I, I'm trying to keep it somewhat realistic. And he did send that contract extension uh, with the box. So I was like, eh, you know, maybe we'll go and, and, and eliminate real life contracts in the year two, like once we go into next offseason. But uh, a lot of the top guys, I would rather not. So what I'm looking at here, we got Jordan Poyer, 
Looking to bring him in at strong safety. He's 32. It's kind of just a band-aid, two-year band-aid. Just because I don't know, you know. I know the strength of the draft class is corner. I don't know if we're going to get a good corner. So I'm also like, I think Greedy Williams as a scheme fit 25 with the startup. Might as well bring him in. And then worst case scenario, again, we only have, you know, Levi Wallace is going to be on a one year next year. Same with Witherspoon. So we do find a good corner. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, then I'm looking at Andre Smith, uh, who is a 73 overall kicker. But we're going to go a little bit light on free agency this year and be maybe more aggressive next year. All right. So I've been looking for, uh, you know, corners. That's, that was where I started for the draft. And unfortunately, we got scouting on two corners, and they don't look particularly good. So our next biggest need is at the front three spot. And there's where we actually, you know, <laughs> this is our only shot. Everyone else is all still a shot in the dark. But we got Doug Patterson here out of Alabama. In our scheme at 6'3", 295, would kick out to a defensive end. And as you can see, man, the key ratings across the board look good. He's a top fit for us. And the combine is about as good as it gets. Really, at this point, you know he's going to be in the 70s. He's just kind of hoping he has a dev trait. So this looks like a hell of a pick. Doug Patterson, welcome to the Steelers. And he has the dev trait. That's an absolute home run of a pick. Draft recap time. I mean, kind of peaked with the first pick. Rather than that, you just try to go BPA. Um... And I, and I feel pretty good. We got a 74 safety, Ben Tucker. It was, again, just BPA. Don't need him because of Jordan Poyer, but the rest of the board was very bad. And he's still a great player. And Jordan Poyer's kind of old, so maybe there's something there. Uh, tackle was a whiff. Fourth round, we got Corey Merle, a pretty decent-looking corner. Could play safety as well with that size. 70, couple 60s here to round it out, but that is the pick right there. Come on, baby. Give me superstar dev. Here's what our team likes as we go into year two on the offensive side of the ball. The biggest change going into this season is a full year of Malik Willis as a superstar player. And what can we get next? Can we get the X Factor? You already know he's the kind of guy that needs to get escape artists to really truly feel like Malik Willis here in Madden. So that is a goal. We're, you know, again, I think the argument could be we absolutely operated maximum capacity on offense last year with Dan Moore and Akor for at tackle. So, I mean, maybe offensive line doesn't really matter. I don't know. I say that and then watch us be terrible this year and get sacked like 60, 70 times. So, have to keep an eye on the tackle spots. As we flip to the defense here, we signed Jordan Poyer to really help uh, well around our, our safety tandem between him and Minka Fitzpatrick. We have Alex Highsmith now, full season as a superstar. Excited to see him take the next step. Brought in Greedy Williams at corner. So between him, Wallace, and Witherspoon, that should be more than solid enough. And you know what? We're actually going to undersize the nose tackle with our first-round pick, Patterson. Kind of like how Javon Hargrave played there. Uh, obviously, Hargrave's probably about 10 pounds heavier. But, you know, maybe we put Patterson on a diet this season and maybe enter the offseason a little bit bigger as a nose tackle. But uh, we'll go undersized here this season and maybe trade off a little bit of run defense for an added help of an interior pass rush. So year two, we made the playoffs last year, won the division last year, would hate to take a step backward. Let's at least reach those, you know, kind of targets here in year two. So roughly midway point of year two, and we're five and four, only a game back. That's, you know, not a step backwards, which is about as good as you could ask for. We actually have a player of the week coming off our week 10, 31, 15 victory. And it is TJ Watt, two sacks. He's a guy... Probably the only disappointing player for us last season with TJ Watt. I think he had nine and a half sacks, which isn't bad, but he's TJ Watt. He needs to be getting like 15 minimum in a season. Well, let's take a look at our contracts. We went light in free agency, so we have more money to keep our own players here in-house. So let's see who's actually looking for a contract right now. Uh, I mean, a core four has been okay at tackle, but I think we'll wait and see. Dotson with the dev trait. Let's get him locked up. We'll throw him a four-year deal, four-year 31. He should take that. We have Witherspoon at corner. We, you know, replaceable. Wallace seems it's, you know, more than solid. I think let's give him a two-year deal. He's gone up dev trait last year. Seems to be meshing in well with our scheme. We got Devin Bush. Give him something like a five-year deal over the cap. It, get that under five mil, which we do. Highsmith coming out the breakout. Still think, you know, four years. This might be a value when all is said and done. 40 million for a superstar pass rusher. They usually aren't that cheap. Look at Claypool. That is... Another really reasonable contract for a guy that I think has a higher ceiling than where he's at right now. So I think just bargains. I mean, Miles Jack's the only guy that's kind of expensive. Even then, it's not that bad for a guy that probably come around year five will be superstar X-Factor and in the 90s. 
So uh, we'll definitely come back to the table for Miles Jack. I'll wait and see on a core four, but again, I'm kind of glad we went light and free agency so we have all this money to keep our own talent in house. So the end of year two, a little bit disappointing. Nine and eight's not brutal from what we had last year, which is 12 wins. Like it's, it's a step back, but it's not like mad and just absolutely destroyed our team. But the optics from being first place in the division to last place in the division in a matter of a year, while my team got five overall points better, uh, certainly frustrating for sure. But I mean, we wasn't expecting to make the playoffs all five years. Maybe this is our slight down year. Looking at our stats this season, it quickly just, you know, ripped the bandit off, get the next year. Leak Willis definitely took his game to another level. 4,300 passing yards, 34 touchdowns, 14 picks. A little less in the rushing game. Just under 400 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Another great year, Najee Harris, 14 and 14. We got 12 and 8 for Johnson, 1,010 for Claypool, 7 and 8 for Miller. Frymouth a little bit down from where he was a year ago. Defensively, Miles Jack, tackle machine, TJ Watt, exactly where he needs to be. 17 TFLs on 89 tackles, 20 sacks. And interception, six picks for Levi Wallace, who's been amazing for us since, uh, well, they, they signed him in real life. Hopefully he's good for you guys as he is here in Madden. MVP went to Patrick Mahomes. Wow, Baker Mayfield in Philly. Okay, didn't see that happening. Looking quickly at the awards, defensive player of the year goes to TJ Watt. Not really a surprise. You'll also get linebacker of the year. Levi Wallace gets DB of the year. A chance, maybe a chance here for a superstar death for Levi Wallace. That will probably be the only good thing that can really come out of this first season. So let's sit right here to the offseason and include our lockers, see if anybody went up dev traits. And, you know, we kind of said in during last year's free agency, we're going to be a little bit on the cheap side so that this year maybe we can be a little bit more aggressive. So hopefully there are the upgrades available in free agency. Look at our team offensively, no dev traits. Defensively, yes, Levi Wallace up to a superstar. That's kind of awesome. See the guy? No, I don't know. I could be wrong. Is Levi Wallace the guy that played uh, like tut, like like flag football or something crazy like that in Alabama? Or like, yeah, like, I don't know. I could be wrong. Could be butchering his backstory. But I, there was a was a guy at Alabama that like didn't come through like traditionally as like a high star recruit. Uh, Patterson, our highly touted rookie, only a star dev. That's kind of annoying, but he's still you know pretty good player for sure. So let's get in the off season, spend a little bit of money. Unfortunately for this free agency, wasn't a whole lot there. A couple old tackles. Uh, we're going to go a little bit on the cheat side. We have the top bid for Andrew Thomas. He'd be nice. We can bring him in, kick him over to right. Tackle. Has the dev traits. 25. It's only going to get better. But there's also a pretty big bid in there from the 49ers. So not a lock will get him. But other than that, I mean, I kind of came in talking a big game. And uh, there's just not... Not much, man. A real, real weak free agency class. So again, just kick all that cap. Even if we get Thomas, we're still going to have plenty of rollover cap into the next offseason. Andrew Thomas is a scrub. Glad we didn't get him. That guy sucks. They brought back fifth-year options in the Madden franchise. Thank God that's back. We will pick up the fifth-year option on Najee Harris. So I guess there's the money that we're spending this offseason. All right, another time where like, I, what I want is not there. I want an offensive lineman. There's like one debatable one is Don Bayless here out of Georgia. Just don't have a lot of information. See pass block. Combine looks pretty good, but O line's obviously one of those spots that you know you can't really focus a lot. Look at the names as well in this draft. Look at this. Marcel Money from Texas Tech. He actually looks from a combine's perspective pretty good. But again, we're just in an area of, of, of best player available. And this guy is our best player, and he's a scheme fit. Darrell Streets. A block shed, B tackle, 6'6", 305, with a very good combine. Fuck! But, okay, we'll, we'll just act like the first player, and even though he's normal dev, that uh, he has really good stats. And then the second round, we got an offensive tackle with a hidden dev trade, Chad Wilkins. Who needs Andrew Thomas? So I look at our draft recap. We know, I'm going to guess, just high rating, and then decent rating and a dev trade. Which is what we got. Streets is a 75. And again, it's just future-proofing that defensive end position. He's a good player. Uh, we got Wilkins, 68. But with a dev trait, rest of the draft, uh, you know, just got some solid players. Nothing really insane. But I'm happy with those first two picks. Would have been nice to have two dev traits, but I'll take one. So our Pittsburgh Steelers team going into year three. In terms of changes on the offensive side of the ball, I would argue it's an upgrade at right tackle. Going from a core four to now hit a dev trait Wilkins. Hopefully it's Superstar. That'd be cool. 
All right, that'd be just cool. And on the defensive side, well, again, got streets, so we're much like, um, you know, Tucker back here at safety, kind of just in case one of these guys falls off a cliff sooner or later, we do have some depth, and more so is just weak draft classes, not a lot of picks left, just go BPA. Uh, we have Wallace, who's now a superstar dev, so he's been getting interceptions left, right, and center. Hopefully that continues, maybe even picks up production. Maybe he gets nine picks instead of six. So excited to hopefully get back in the playoffs here in year number three. All right, we suck. Um, I don't know. You know, usually when things start to suck, we can always look at uh, expanding our playbook, giving, uh, giving us a little bit better chance. But this is really our only f one down year. Uh, I'll say that if somehow, somewhere we finish with like a top three pick, maybe we look at, and I'm saying this with quotation fingers, hiring a Kansas City Chief OC, hiring... Uh, a Tampa Bay Bucks OC, if you know what I'm saying, to try to up our production here just a little bit. No, no, like, literally makes no sense. So, like, when the game decides to really just, you know, plow you for no apparent reason, you gotta plow back. And the only way to plow back is going with an overpowered playbook. So, we'll just see. You know, if Madden doesn't want me doing that, they'll, they'll give us, you know, seven wins in a row or something like that. Because at worst, at worst, this 85 overall Steelers team, at worst, is like a nine-win team. So I, I really, I don't know what's going on. But here at the midway point, might as well just talk about some contracts. Um, first off, we have Cam Hayward. Might as well. One-year deal if he takes it. We have two. It. I, I, I will say if either one of these players decline, I'm ready to move on. But they both want to stick around. We got Frymouth at tight end. Absolutely get you back. He's been pretty solid for us. Not so worried about Poyer. I think he's going to regress. Kendrick Green has been more than serviceable at center, so we'll throw him a five-year long-term deal. Keep him here for the remainder of the rebuild. Yeah. Oof. I mean, that's actually a reasonable contract for Dan Moore. I'll probably even throw in that money. That's still enough wiggle room. If there's an upgrade at tackle, you could also sign that and have Dan Moore be your swing tackle. So good business here. Able to re-sign everybody. Poyer. Yeah, you know, that, that's bad regress, and he's only going to regress even more. We end up getting five wins, finishing 6-11. and 11. Uh, That's bad, man. That's, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, we, let's just do that right now. We'll just act like uh, Mike Tomlin under the guise of whatever. I was like, hey, we need to, you know, we're not going to go Tampa. We don't need that Tom Brady. Yeah, we inherit that Kansas City cheat. Like that again. This is only what happens when you know in it's when inexplicable things are happening. West Coast power around here. Inexplicable things are happening that shouldn't be happening. This is this is when you do. This is Blake Glass in case of emergency, and that is we're gonna switch to the Chiefs playbook here uh, because uh, they disrespected my team. This 87 overall team that's without a shadow of a doubt a top 10 overall team. You giving me an unexplicable six and eleven record for absolutely no reason at all. I'm gonna go ahead and go. Okay, well, two could play at this game. I'm gonna make my team suck. I'm gonna make my team good the cheap way, and then we'll see. And then maybe, maybe for a year five, the game will recognize my team's talents, and we can go back to the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook, which probably shouldn't even be sticking on the Steelers playbook. We should have his playbook that has you know the Ravens, if you will, uh, which actually is a pretty good play. You know what? That's what we'll do. We won't go all the way. Turn the sliders on to rookie mode with the playbook. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch our playbook here to to a realistic change now. We're gonna get off Pittsburgh, and, and if you're gonna try to maximize what we have here with Malik Willis, you'd be probably looking at the Baltimore Ravens playbook. Their West Coast power on steam, and hopefully that kind of opens things up for Malik Willis here in year four. And if it's not, and if you still disrespect my team, year five, oh baby. We're hiring one of we're hiring Eric Bieniemy as our OC or something like that. In terms of depth trades at the end of the season, Miles Jack went up to a superstar X Factor, and on the offensive side, Wilkins Dev trade came out as star. So for this free agency, it's time to be aggressive. We're gonna look at David Bakhtiari trying to get the top free agent available on the offensive line. I wasn't about Tevin Jenkins here at left tackle, um, but we're gonna try to you know I, I feel like we got the edge there over Atlanta and the Raiders. Also, if we're going to try to you know, emulate the Ravens, why not get two very important players? we got Nick Boyle, who'll be our backup tight end, blocking primarily, and Reichard, 
the pancake man himself at fullback because I'm pretty sure that's in my mind at least how the Baltimore Ravens offense works, right? You have just a bunch of guys that just block. So hopefully that works and we get blocked to Yari. We got both of our Ravens, but not our tackle. I don't know why tackles don't want to come here. Um, Of course, and now the tackle mark is going to be depleted. Dan Moore staring us in the face is probably our best remaining option. Uh, I don't want to overpay for him. That's annoying. Mm. Eh, screw it. We'll try to draft one, man. That's literally all we need. I got to find the best tackle in the draft. That's what we'll do. Also, we are going to pick up the fifth-year option of Malik Willis's contract because that's just what you do with first-round quarterbacks that are good. Hopefully, we'll never be picking this high again. But the sixth pick in the draft, I've kind of looked around. There's a good corner. He actually looks pretty damn good, to be honest with you. We've been looking for a corner for a minute. But, you know, get the A-man, B-press, 5'11", 193. Combine looks pretty dang good. However... You know, we need a tackle, and when there's a prospect that's a little equally as promising, we have Brian Samuel here at UCLA. BBBs, he's a fit for us. The combine's very good. You just got to go with the tackle. Because either way, this tackle is going to be expected to play day one. I'd rather go with that than corner three. So we're getting Brian Samuel. Please be a dev. Yes! There you go, baby. That's a top ten pick. That's what a top ten pick looks like. Draft recap. So with the, I mean, I'm hoping that tackle's not like, you know, sub 70 overall. Be nice if he's like 72, 73. He's 71. Nice. But with the boost, he's 73 with the def. He is going to be our starting right tackle this season. Second round, we got Hugh Goodwill. Uh, 70, well, with the boost, 76 wide receiver out of Oklahoma State. Great speed. Good looking player right there. Third round, we got Hartwell. I'm not going to, I can't take credit. I, I, I filled the board up, let the computer make the rest of the picks. And they actually hit on one here. God damn. This guy's a beast. Dev Trey, let's go. And then we got Mims Center, 73. That's not too bad. But full credit there. I, I set the board after the second round pick. The computer went, hey, well, actually, you know, technically, I said this guy looked good. Maybe consider drafting him. And they just went ahead and just submitted the paperwork. But uh, I'll take two hidden devs. That That's awesome. Hopefully helps us, along with the switch to the Ravens offensive playbook, to be more competitive here in year three. Year four for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hiring away the uh, Ravens OC, I suppose. Changes on the offense. Swung and miss on Bakhtiari in free agency, but luckily able to draft Samuel with the sixth overall pick. That'd be cool now if he's a superstar. We'll always just say that to give us hope. Other than that, not a lot of changes to the offensive side of the ball. Bringing in uh, Goodwell at wide receiver. A lot of speed there to pair with Austin. So we just got a lot of speed. We're a fast team at the skill position spots defensively Hartwell you know that's a nice little pick there in dev but it's kind of just a bonus not expecting anything too too crazy it's I mean again man just it's a good team 87 overall shouldn't be missing the playoffs here in year four all right so we're the midway point of year four and we're five and five a last place in the division it's just tempted me to go to uh you know let's do a little experiment here we're five and five it's not always a given, but let's just see what happens if uh, we go to just just for argument's sake for this year, because this year's already pissed away. Let's take a little gander at a playbook here. I think it's West Coast Power Run anyways. So we're going to put on the Chiefs playbook. We'll see what happens, see if we win out the rest of these games. If, I don't know if I want to finish the reveal that way, but I mean, I don't know what's going on here, man. Our team's way too damn good to be underperforming like this. Lynette contract. These are guys that we want for the final year of this rebuild. And uh, I think Levi Wallace has earned his spot, earned his keep. He's been one of our better guys. Got up Dev a couple times. We got old man Cam Hayward. Sure, I didn't. If I would have known he would be here the full five years, I probably wouldn't have drafted that defensive end when I did. We have James Daniels, who was a part of that first free agency class that we had at the beginning of this rebuild. Got him locked up for an additional three years. Najee Harris looking for a four year contract. That's fairly easy. We want him in the building. Yeah, pretty much got to write down a blank check for TJ White and say, whatever you want, just jot this down. Okay, I got to bring this live. We've won two in a row since we've made the uh, playbook change. Not saying we're going to win them all, but it's just, all right, we've won three in a row since we've gone to the Chiefs playbook. Week 15, we've made it f <laughs> four in a row. So we're four and one. 
Okay, so we made the switch to the playbook. We finished four and two. Oh, the oh shit! There's a break out there. Maybe, maybe there's not something to it. We went, you know, four and three in the last seven games. Uh, again, gotta have to figure it out uh, for the final year. I, I don't want to do that, man. If I'm gonna win, I, I feel like if I, you know, maybe we need to switch playbooks. I, we gotta try to figure out how to do with Baltimore. Like that is like if you were approaching this rebuild to try to figure out how you can have the highest chance of success with Malik Willis, it's going to be like, well, let's be the Ravens. Let's try to make him Lamar Jackson. So, uh, you know, knowing that we're going into our final free agency period, maybe we'd be a little more aggressive with the, uh, you know, with how we spend our money. We got like 30, we're going to have probably $35 million-ish worth of salary cap. But this just isn't good enough for almost a 90 overall team back-to-back -back years. Out of, first year, we got 12 wins. It's Meyer Jackson's rookie season. Got the superstar dev trade in season. And then years three and four were last place in the division. It's been very competitive, but uh, there's just it's just bullshit, and bullshit going on. Looking at Lamar Jackson this year, not Lamar Jackson, Malik Willis. We hope he could be Lamar Jackson and get an MVP. Uh, Thirty-five touchdowns, thirteen picks. I mean, how much of that was aided by going to the Chiefs playbook? I don't know, but that's not a bad year. We have thirteen and eighteen for Najee Harris, six hundred yards rushing for Malik Willis. Receiving a thousand for Goodwell, a thousand for Johnson, a thousand for Claypool, seven and eight there for Frymouth. And on the defensive side of the ball, 142 tackles, two sacks, two picks from Miles Jack, 19 and a half sacks for TJ. So, like, what, where was this TJ Watt? Year one, TJ Watt had nine and a half sacks. What's going on here? Like, that's just, it's just weird. Uh, ben Tucker. Three interceptions leads the team. A very quick look at the yearly awards here in year four. Zeke is your MVP. Malik Willis coming in at number 10. I don't think we're going to see any Pittsburgh Steelers here in the awards. And that's perfectly fine because this was a bad year, man. I don't know. They just don't want us to win. We're going to have to figure something out. I think the only thing I can think of is make sure we spend all of our money in free agency. And that's all I got. Last little bit before the off season, got to take a look at the team. Any dev traits? Do I have a chance? Malik Willis played very well to get an X Factor. He did not. Oh, but Samuel's an X Factor or a superstar, which is as good as an X Factor. Nice. We drafted a superstar tackle. That's dope. Brian Samuel, thing of beauty. I mean, we got him top. What was he six over? Was that six or five? I think we were six in the draft last year, so we got him six overall. Superstar left tackle. You know, it's not a lot better than that. Uh, no other dev trades on the defensive side of the ball, which is, is what it is. But I'll take a superstar tackle every day of the week. So looking at free agency, got to be aggressive, got to be as, I mean, had to pretty, pretty much make a choice here between Jonathan Allen and or Trey White. And I figure our front three is still fine. They're, you know, two, it's regressing a little bit, but it's still fine for the most part. But our secondary, Greedy Williams, Levi Wallace. Wallace has regressed down to a 76. So I figure throwing an X-Factor in the back end would help. And then we're going to look at Chris Alave at wide receiver to be a true outside deep threat with a little bit more upside than what we've had. Hopefully we land them because if not, there's plenty of other options and it'd be pretty lame. You know, I, I think a lot of this is going to get sucked up after day one. There's not going to be a lot of fallback options if we do not hit on Chris Alave and Trey White. Okay, we got Chris Alave at wide receiver. Trey White declined. So, yeah. oh, I mean, well, I'll take 50% of what we wanted. Trey White declined. We still get Kendall Fuller, even though he's more of a... Oh, shit, yeah. It's, it, it dried up there pretty bad. But I still think we can get him. We'll offer him... 8 and 6. No, 8 and 7 and 5. There we go. 8, 5, 7, 5. Sounds like a goddamn... Oh, my God. There's going to be a... Pretty much, there's other teams that missed out on the top corners. And they, too, are going to be trying to bid for his services here. So let's go with the biggest offer. I don't think I can go much higher than $16 million. That puts us in first place. Still gives us a little more money to potentially... I mean, we can land a special... We can go special teams if we really wanted to. But I think we are, again, going to commit to the, you know, the Ravens playbook. We might as well bring back the old fullback here. Right card. Didn't really work out last year, but we can we can swing again another season, make our full commitment that we're going to try our best to put Malik Willis at least in the same situations 
that give Lamar Jackson a great success. Okay, Fuller rejected us. So we just uh, are not landing any big free agents. They don't want to come here. Mike Tomlin's known as a hard ass, I guess. I mean, shit, we might as well just get the top kicker available. <laughs> Maybe that helps our team overall. Maybe we win a game or two. Make kicks that we weren't making a year ago. But that's brutal, man. Swing and a miss on two top corners. Don't want any. And like now, now again, you're this late in a free agency. It is pretty rough. So yeah, well, guess we'll we'll get a kicker and then hopefully maybe draft a good corner. All right, again, we just want to kind of go in on a corner here. Uh, it's really between two. You have Amir Ringer from Penn State. We only have C Press Combine. is is solid. Not the worst that I've seen. You want to talk about worst? How is this guy a first rounder? Luke Saunders from Boston College. We got C Man F Zone, F Zone, and he ran the 43rd 40, 44 three cone, 42nd shuttle. And obviously, that's pro day, and his combine was equally as bad. How is that guy a first rounder? Uh, we're going to look at this guy here, Eric Carey out of Georgia. We got A catching C Man. Again, not the best, but the combine is pretty juicy looking. And uh, I'll gamble on those traits and upside. Eric Carey, yes, hidden dev and corner. Might have to throw him to the wolves, get him out there his rookie season. Help us. Super Bowl or bust here in year five. All right, draft recap time. Wonder how well we did. Hopefully, you know, feels like the last couple times we've got hidden dev corners. They're low, like low 70s. And Carey is a beast. 76 with the boost. Hidden dev. Scheme fit. I don't think you could ask for a better player in the final year of a rebuild. We got a 71 D tackle. Uh, rest of the, you know, it's solid, but that is a home run of home runs. Let's go. All right, final team. Here's our final submission. On our uh, thesis here, college thesis, trying to get our master's degree in rebuilding on the offensive side of the ball. We brought back Riker. We brought in Chris Olave. Hopefully that will help out. On the defensive side of the ball. Well, we swung and missed on a couple corners, but we got an absolute stud in carry out of Georgia. So I'm excited for him to get out there, hit the field. I'm excited for the rest of this team because there's no way a 90, 90 overall with a superstar quarterback, the most important position. There is no way this team doesn't at least get us. I don't know. I don't care if we're 9 and 8 and make the playoffs. I don't care if we're 12 and whatever the hell. 12 and 6, 12 and 5, however many games equals 17. It's first thing in the morning. We are making the freaking Super Bowl this year. Midway point of the final year, and we're good. 6 and 3. Everyone else in the division is very good. Three way tie, 6 and 3. The worst place team is the Bengals at 5 and 3. I just, this is only going to end well, right? Just, uh, just bringing this one back. I was going to send me the end of the season. Just had to say, after we talked about being 6-3, we lost 31-0 to the Browns. Awesome. Well, we finished 11-6, which is way better than what we've done the last And we almost still missed the playoffs. Third team in our division. It's a grind. No one said it was going to be easy, but I will take 11-6. At least we have a chance to go on a little bit of a run here. How did we get to this point? Well, let's see. Uh... I mean, it needs to also be said, and not at one point, I don't think we've had a leader here. Outside of the one year, TJ Watt had like 20 sacks. So it hasn't been great perform like elite performances. Uh, Malik Willis, 3,400 passing yards, 33 touchdowns. I mean, he's been good. It needs to be said, you know, originally, if I mapped out this rebuild, it was a Kenny Pickett rebuild. But, you know, the last two years in particular, Malik Willis, solid. I mean, you give me 30 plus touchdowns, and he's been, you know, consistently getting 500 yards rushing. You know, that's, that's a dynamic player. 13-12 for Najee on the receiving front. No 1,000-yard receiver, which kind of stinks. But Claypool, 900 yards, 12 touchdowns. That's a respectable season. Defensively, Miles Jack continues to be a tackle machine. 13 and a half sacks from TJ Watt. That's, you know, as low as you'd probably want to see him really get for you. Four picks for Greedy Williams leading the team. A quick year a little look at Ely Awards. Mahomes is the MVP. Malik Willis, once again, a copy and paste. 10th in the MVP race. Taking a look here at the individual awards. TJ Watt is the top linebacker in the NFL. And that's that's all you can really say about it. So here we are. Year 5. 
All or nothing. I think we'll probably just have to play the moments here, I suppose. Maybe go on. It's just first-hand experience on this all or nothing playoff run. All right, let's go. Opening a drive here. We'll just pop a Barrett. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know what that is, you're not an OG. I will say I love the fact that we got in the red zone and got a nice little field goal there. Uh, is that, you know, we'll try to sim it when we can. And if things like we get back to back drives with no points and they get a couple, of, you know, we'll interject ourselves. But ideally, I would like to think that this Steelers team can get us one or two wins. We got to run the gauntlet. We're starting in the wild card. But I, I'm going to put up one to two wins minimum before we need to come in. And it's looking like we're handling business here. Ravens against the Ravens, essentially. It's Lamar, Malik Willis. I'm sure, like, if that actually happens. Malik Willis does go to the Steelers in real life, which I did a poll yesterday on Twitter just to... Why is why is he green? He turned into the Hulk. Uh, but who the Pittsburgh Steelers fans would want between Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett? It seems like it was like 75-25. Everyone wanted Malik Willis. Just imagine, that is going to be, like, stylistically, you know? That's, that's absurd. That's going to be some electrifying matchups that could be in store to already one of the best rivalries in the NFL. Well, we get the job done here. Clean, almost 2 169 yards for Najee Harris as the Steelers roll the Ravens 34 to 10. Yep. All good things need to come to an end. Here, again, yet another AFC rebuild where if you want to go win the Super Bowl, at some point you got to beat Mahomes and the Chiefs. But we're higher overall by one point. A couple points. Offensively, though, higher overall. All right, snow game. This should be a game that actually kind of benefits us. A guy that's already super hard to tackle in Malik Willis. Make it just that much harder. See, now here's where you come in. Where it gives you a bunch of third downs. You can just, it doesn't really immediately pass the smell test. of like, are we actually going to score here? So let's see. We got uh, Deontay Johnson at the top of the screen. That's probably where I want to go here. Or we'll just, oh, what the, who was that? That was actually ridiculous pursuit. I thought we could sneak away there. All right, we need our defense to, like, do something. We get a nice little instant touchdown, two-minute drill. I'll hop in at some point during the show. There we go. Let's go. Let's see if we can help him out here. We'll go flood. Close to field goal range. And, again, I don't know what the wind is. These snow games, it could be, like, 17 win in the wrong direction. So we, we might not even be in field goal range. We're going to dump this into the running back. He gets popped. But is that enough for a first down? It is. We'll burn a timeout. Oh, right in the red zone. Can they finish it off? They do. And then my defense actually holds on just enough. Oh, my God. Oh, I should have went there. That I, I needed to convert. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I already knew right away. That drive there, when it gave me third down in the red zone, we needed to convert, hop in and get that a touchdown. Settle for three. Chiefs go down the field. Bing, bang, boom. Like two freaking plays. And then we just, man, that's back-to-back -back times when they had, Chiefs had to have a tackle. They were able to get it. They're able to rely on their defense. And that, that that's the whole, you know, when you take on the Chiefs, you can't let them be like, find a way to win with their defense. When the Chiefs find a way to win their defense, it's just like, well, their offense is unstoppable anyways. So yet again, I, don't, I literally, you could count, I would say any of our AFC rebuilds that we have yet to win a Super Bowl, uh, which I mean, I actually haven't written down. I only write down on my notes what players we use per rebuild. But if I looked at like the win losses, I would almost guarantee, I would almost guarantee, which is insane because it's only one team out of 16. In every AFC rebuild that we failed to win a Super Bowl, we, we've most likely lost to the Chiefs. Like, you just can't beat the Chiefs, man. We tried our best. We tried our best. I mean, the turning point in that game was when it gave us third down and we took three and literally like three took them three plays to score the touchdown. Um, and yeah, that's what it was. Take the Chiefs on. Their offense is unstoppable, and you let their defense get a bunch of stops. You can't do that. You got to win shootouts against them. And unfortunately, we could not. So, I mean, we were on a streak, though. I, I feel like literally the last two or three rebuilds, we've won a Super Bowl. We were due. But, and look at that. Oddly enough, full circle. Look who the top quarterback is. I mean, he's in the Saints, so they have cheesy playbook, but, you know. We got, I want a Kenny Pickett. We ended up getting Malik Willis. Kenny Pickett right there, hottest court. I mean, look, the Saints aren't in the playoffs, so it doesn't really matter. That's all you want. We're not, these rebuilds don't get judged off of uh, how, how, you know, how, how productive you are statistically. You need Super Bowls, but it is kind of weird that we literally just said, I want a Pickett, and we got Malik Willis. 
I guess it's fair to compare the careers. Uh, that'd be interesting. So Malik Willis has, we'll round that up, 20,000 passing yards, 150 touchdowns, 57 picks, as well as, we'll round that up, 2,500 rushing yards and 12 rushing touchdowns. So comparing that with Kenny Pickett of the Saints, he's 176 touchdowns. So he has more touchdowns, more picks, 3,000 more rushing yard, uh, passing yards, significantly less, like almost 2,000 less. So it's about the same. Like Honestly speaking, you take the total... Uh, yards, total touchdowns, and they're, they're breaking about even. What is his player card looking like? What's his dev trade? Is he superstar, superstar X Factor? He's a superstar as well. Kenny Two Gloves right there. So there is still an opportunity. I, I do want to eventually do a rebuild, refocus on Kenny Pickett. I don't know which one that is going to be. I know we have a Falcons rebuild. They're probably going to need a quarterback. So maybe, maybe, just maybe we do that. But... Sorry, Steeler fans. We tried, man. We tried. You know what? Really, you know what? Honestly, we can't even really second guess this rebuild because of this Chiefs loss. You know what the issue was? The fact that we were really pretty much this same team for the last three years, and we had two straight years of not making the playoffs. That is probably the biggest issue of this whole rebuild. Is that years three and four, when we should have been and most likely were a top ten team in the NFL, we were last place in the AFC North. That's that's just wasted years, man. When you only have five, when you set those limits to yourself. You really got to just, every time you can make the playoffs, you got to go for it. And we could not do that here. I think we built a hell of a team. Hook a team, a Steelers team that's always good at their lowest point. And we built them up, man. We built them up. Look at this. This we we The O-line is Steelers O-line. We drafted two great tackles. We still have Fryermuth. Dante Johnson was here. Claypool's here. Harris is here. We drafted Willis, right? Olave is really the only kind of like, you know, splash move we made on offense. And that was at the very end just because we had salary cap to spend. He didn't even do anything. He had like 700 yards. Defensively, we stuck with, you know, Tewitt and Hayward. We drafted Patterson. We stuck with the entire linebacking core. We stuck with Minka. We stuck with freaking Levi Wallace and developed him into a superstar. Drafted Tucker. I mean, this was a good rebuild. I think like some rebuilds, your team's going to be inflated because you spent a lot of money in free agency. This was like as authentic as and genuine of a rebuild. We kept the talent that we had. We drafted really good players. And when all is said and done, we got into the grinder with the Kansas City Chiefs, and that is just what happens more often than not. you got to play your best football, and we did not. But that'll do it for today's rebuild, fellas. Let me know what team you want to do see next. We got the Texans. We got the Falcons. We got the Bills. We got the Ravens. We got the Titans. We got the Chiefs. We got the Chargers. We got the Eagles. We got the Cowboys. We got the Cardinals, Rams, 49ers. I'm doing. I'm rebuilding every team. I would say, I, I would say right now, the Chiefs are probably the most interesting to do them because if we do the updated Chiefs roster, they're not going to be as overpowered. There's no more Tyree Kill, so I do think I do want to do a Chiefs rebuild sooner than later, just because you know not too often you get a really good Madden team that's not really much of a challenge of a rebuild, but the Chiefs have kind of you know made it a little more challenging. So uh, I don't know. We'll see some of those in the coming days. But let me know in the comment section below which one you would prefer to see sooner than later. Uh, but that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.